Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we are talking about the metaverse, that's right, virtual reality, the world that formerly Facebook is creating because they've already got a groping problem, and of course, right? So here we are. This is coming from the Technology Review by uh, basically an article by Tanya Basu, and I quote her extensively in this because quite frankly, I think this is an important uh, issue, and as Meta is now just basically coming into its own as a virtual world, meaning the metaverse, we need to basically stop these things before they start, and here we go. Now, we're going to see if that's possible or not. Now, here's what's going on. And again, I'm heavily quoting uh, Ms. Basu here in her just great article. Last week, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, opened access to its virtual reality social media platform known as Horizons World or Horizon Worlds. Excuse me. Early description of the platform basically make it seem like it's fun, it's wholesome, drawn comparisons to things like Minecraft. Obviously, Mark Zuckerberg did a video of that where he was you know, on his own avatar, all those kinds of things. Now, in Horizon Worlds, up to 20 avatars can get together at a time to explore, hang out, you know, do what they're, do what they're gonna do, basically, in the metaverse, whatever you wanna do, have a meeting, whatever. Now, not everything, though, is essentially warm and fuzzy. According to Meta on November 26, a beta tester reported something that's obviously incredibly troubling, she had been groped virtually by a stranger on New World. Now, on December 1st, Meta revealed that she had posted her experience in the Horizon World's beta testing group on Facebook. Meta's internal review of the incident found that the beta tester should have used a tool known as quote-unquote safe zone that's part of a suite of safety filters built into Horizon World. Now, this is basically a protective bubble that users can activate when they feel threatened, and when they're in that mode, nobody can touch them, talk to them, interact with them in any way until they essentially kill safe zone and go back to normal mode, I guess, or whatever uh, Facebook is, meta, excuse me, is calling it. Now, this is unfortunately not the first time that somebody has been groped in virtual reality, and it's not gonna be the last. But this incident shows that until companies like Meta, AKA Facebook, work out how to protect their participants, the metaverse really isn't gonna be a safe place. Now take the example of Jordan Bellamere, also from this article here, who basically wrote an open letter on Medium describing being groped in a game called Quiver, in which players equipped with bows and arrows essentially just shoot zombies and do that kind of thing. Now, she described essentially a groping by another player um, that, you know, attempted to grope her. And when she told this player to stop, she also tried to leave. And this individual, we're assuming it's a he, followed her around making grabbing and pinching noises or pinching motions near her upper torso. And she goes on to describe a lot more. And you can read that, uh, basically her accounting for yourself if you want to get more details, but you know where I'm going with with this. Now, I bring this up because essentially a constant uh, a constant topic here for debate on message boards after Ms. Bellamere's Medium article was whether or not she actually experienced groping because her body couldn't have been physically touched. You know, she's sitting presumably at home. The individual doing this is presumably at home. And so is this actually groping? Now, here's the thing. And according to this article, and I think this is a really good point, sexual assault and harassment in virtual worlds is sadly not new, nor is it realistic to expect a world in which these issues will completely disappear. So as long as there are people who will literally hide behind their computer keyboards and their screens, basically to evade moral responsibility, this is going to continue to happen. And so the question is, whose responsibility it is to make sure that, that these users are basically safe or comfortable. Uh, Meta, for example, says they give users access to tools to keep themselves safe, effectively shifting the onus onto them. But the fact that basically this Meta, this new Metaverse groping victim, neither didn't either think to use the safe zone tool or couldn't access it is one of the issues that we've got here. And until we figure out whose job it is to protect users, one major step towards a safer virtual world is disciplining aggressors who often go free, basically, and remain eligible to participate online even after their behavior becomes known. So obviously deterrence are needed here. Now, I think this was an excellent article. I skipped a lot of quotes and all that kind of stuff, but that is the gist 
of what Tanya Basu of Technology Review was talking about. And I think it's a really good point. We do need deterrence. If you look at our online life, forget the metaverse for a second, there are just super angry people that will harass. We've seen this through Gamergate and, and everything else that will harass, uh, you know, uh, members of the opposite sex. It's not something that it easily goes away. And now you're taking it one step further. It's one thing to have screeds on keyboards with threats and all that kind of stuff, which is not cool by any stretch of the imagination. Now, when we are moving into this virtual reality world and it starts to, and this was briefly mentioned in the article, starts to feel psychologically real, meaning we start to have the same emotional reactions, the, the, the same mannerisms we would if we were talking to somebody just in person live, uh, you know, in reality, that becomes an issue because then our responses become the same thing. And if somebody is literally, as they say, hiding behind a keyboard and a virtual persona and doing things that essentially are not acceptable in this way, it's a problem for everybody. And I don't think the onus necessarily is on the the, the victim uh, so much as it is on the company itself. The company needs, in this case, Meta, aka Facebook, needs to make sure they're putting in good control. So, for example, if you are doing something like that and, and it is witnessed there, uh, you know, that that actually happened, these are things that are caused for permanent bans. Now, obviously, the question becomes, OK, what's stopping me from spinning up another account on another computer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are things I think that need to be challenged. But deterrence absolutely need to be there. It's not cool when people go after each other. And I've talked about this, you know, I'm just ad nauseum, not necessarily the groping or the assault side, but but how people are essentially lose decorum based on the anonymity that online presences give them. We've seen it all the way back from AOL. You can even look it up, Zeron versus AOL. Well, which is one of the first uh, major court cases on those kinds of harassment that actually led to a Supreme Court case that gave us uh, Section 230 protections for the Internet. So this goes back since the beginning of human interaction. Now we're taking it to the next level. Now we're taking it more physical, which means as we start putting sensors on our body, if somebody shakes our hand, maybe our glove squeezes like it's shaking a hand. Well, if we're wearing a full body suit, guess what happens there? This problem isn't going away. We have to figure this out. And obviously, this isn't cool. You know, we should be able to interact with each other. The problem is a few rotten apples really do spoil it for the rest of us. But we have to do something to make sure those rotten apples stay away and never come back. That's going to be the uphill battle. And that is your news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everyone.